Hello from South Africa. My name is Myrtle Clark and I am Managing Director of Fields of Green for All, South African cannabis legalization non-profit company. We would like to thank the Civil Society Task Force, the Vienna and New York NGO committees for this opportunity to have the voice of civil society in our country heard on this international platform. More importantly, these three organizations have been a pillar for, of strength for us over the years, offering networking and policy support that has been invaluable for us ordinary criminals. Within the UNGAS 2016 outcome document operational recommendations, there is a commitment to protecting and promoting all human rights freedoms and the dignity of all individuals and the rule of law in the development and implementation of drug policies. It is recommended that the knowledge of policymakers and relevant national authorities be enhanced to ensure that national drug policies respect human rights, fundamental freedoms and protect the well-being of individuals and communities. When myself and my partner were arrested in our home in 2010, we would never have thought that we would be in a position to have how we felt on that night articulated so eloquently in a United Nations document. Our human rights, our privacy and our fundamental freedoms were violated in a very real way. We were so indignant at our treatment at the hands of the police that we spent the next eight years, all our resources and all of our energy, in fighting the government in court. We achieved our first victory in September 2018 when the Constitutional Court of South Africa declared that the prohibition of the personal use, possession and cultivation of cannabis in private spaces is unconstitutional. Following the judgment, our small organization run by volunteers had had his work cut out to ensure that the voice of civil society is heard when it comes to drafting the new laws. As an organization, we are busy writing South Africa's new cannabis laws and regulations. We will present those to our government as a blueprint of what the people who use and trade in this plant want. In addition to this, it is imperative that the breakthrough we have achieved serves to pay the way, pave the way for more human rights-based drug policy as a whole, beyond cannabis. As our country joins others in changing cannabis laws, we implore the United Nations to not stand in our way. South Africa has 900,000 cannabis farmers more than 200,000 registered traditional healers and an informal sector that makes up 75% of our economy. We have a national election coming up in May and just like the last decade that weighs so heavily in international drug policy, South Africa is emerging from a decade of dire corruption, maladministration and increased levels of poverty and violent crime. There is nothing about our country's current drug policy that is working. The same applies internationally, except for a few scattered countries who, with their principled non-compliance, are making changes, and these changes are largely being led by, led by cannabis laws. From opposition at the UN to the threat of the corporate takeover of traditional rural farmers and informal economies, our goal is to raise our voices at every level and by every means in order to set an example both in Africa and the rest of the world. Our efforts would be greatly enhanced by assistance from policy experts in implementing the order of our constitutional court. The makers of the international conventions would do well to recognize our efforts to force our government to implement the UNGAS recommendations, as opposed to trying our patience with very, very slow progress. We all have a common and shared responsibility to address the world drug policy problem. And here in South Africa, we are starting where it matters most, cannabis and the informal sector. This is where we can most affect change that will have a global impact. Nowhere in the world have the rights of the most poor and the most vulnerable been placed as a top priority when it comes to cannabis law reform. The 2009 political declaration and its goals have led to a massive waste of time. Goal number one even recommends the significant reduction or elimination of unre unregulated crops. 
I invite whoever wrote those words to visit South Africa and we will show you fields of green for all. There has not been, nor will there ever be, a reduction in cannabis cultivation in Southern Africa. Cannabis can contribute to the attainment of a majority of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So please give us a chance to show you how we are going to get this right in South Africa. On behalf of the millions who use and trade in this remarkable plant, we implore you to stop setting unrealistic goals, underpinned by overly complex scheduling, so that we can uphold the human rights and the dignity of so many people being persecuted across the world due to failed drug policy. Unfortunately, our organization cannot afford to attend C&D in Vienna this year. But we wish our colleagues and our country representatives all the resolve necessary to set realistic and attainable goals for the next decade. Thank you. That was much better. Yeah. There was no glitches. Whew, okay, cool. Done.